On this episode of Learn With A Classic, a closer look at a misunderstood fuel injection system, Bosch Dejectronic. The Jaguar V12 engine was of course introduced in the Series 3 E-Type. Then it had four carbs on it, Stromberg's, and later on also in the uh, Series 1 XJ12 and the early Series 2 XJ12, it also had four Stromberg carbs. However, the engine was never supposed to run on carbs. It was designed to run on a fuel injection system that was being developed by AE Brico. However, the system uh, never got fully developed. So the engine had to be released and they did the quickest and easiest thing, which was basically put carbs on it. By 1975, it's stricter and stricter US emission laws and basically they had to go over to fuel injection. They chose Bosch Dejectronic, which you might think that's a little weird because that's actually a system from the late 60s used in some Volkswagen, some Porsches, it's also used in Volvo and in Mercedes, used a lot in Mercedes actually. Um, however, the reason that they used it, which is a little odd, like I said, because by the time it was introduced, Bosch had already moved on to newer and more modern systems. It's that it's very similar to the system that they planned to use originally. So it was really easy to adapt for the V12 engine. So now let's have a look at the engine and a closer look at the system. Uh, if you're like me and you have a car like this, you might have noticed that there's not a lot of information out there on the Dejectronic system for the V12. And if you have some issues, it could be hard to find information about troubleshooting the system at all. Of course, there's information in the manual and there's some specific Bosch literature on these engines, but it can sometimes be a little hard to get a hold of. So I thought in this video, I'll go through how the basics of the system works. So if you have a car like this, you can understand how everything runs and how it works. And in possibly in a future video, I'll show more deeper troubleshooting and how to precisely tune these engines to run just perfectly. Because you can get these V12s to run extremely well on the Dejectronic system. They really, really like the overfueling that it sometimes does, and they can be very smooth on this system. So this is what a Dejectronic V12 looks like, but you might be wondering, how can I tell if it's Dejectronic? Well, they should be Dejectronic from 1975 until 1980, but let's say you're wondering, you're not sure. There are a few easy ways of knowing. First of all, you have these on either bank. Those are fuel pressure regulators. On the later system, these are up closer by the rail, not on the banks right here on the inlet manifolds. You can also tell that the fuel rail is a round pipe and it goes all the way around here, two separate fuel rails. On the later cars, it's one fuel rail that goes like a U. So basically the more spaghetti your fuel rail looks like, it's a Dejectronic system. Another telltale sign is this part up here. That is the MAP sensor, the Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. If your system has one of those, it's either up here or on the inner wing of the XJS, then it's a Dejectronic system. The same goes with the injector amplifier. If you have that, it's definitely a Dejectronic system. So now let's head on over to my workbench and I'll show you some of the parts off the car and what they actually look like. And we'll go into some detail of how they work. All right, so here we are at the workbench. Uh, these are some of the main components laid out that is in the Dejectronic system. It's not every component, but unfortunately I don't have a spare or I've kept an extra of every single part of the system. But I thought it would be easier to show some of the main parts off the car before we show them actually on the car. So this is the ECU. It's located in the trunk behind the panel. This is an original Lucas uh, fuel injection fuel pump. It's also in the trunk. This is one of two um, fuel pressure regulators. They're up on top of the engine. Um, so basically these regulate the fuel pressure in the whole system. This is the injection amplifier. It sits up front on top of the radiator. This is hidden deep inside the um, distributor. So here is the rotor, but there is a tiny little magnet here on the back. So when this turns, it basically is a speed sensor 
telling the system that the engine is running, that the rotor is turning, and how fast the engine is turning. So basically, an old version of a crank position sensor. And this, probably the most important part of the system, this is the MAP sensor or Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. This also is located up on the radiator on some cars and on, I believe, the XJS. It's on an inner wing. All right, so this is the ECU. Let's call it the brains of the system. It does basically the same thing that ECUs do today. It's just a lot bigger and not as complicated. Um, it's located in the trunk. Here is the part number. Basically, it's behind the panel, so you're not supposed to see it. This is the only adjustment on basically the whole system. It's a potentiometer that is, it can go both ways. Uh, basically, it sets the um, mixture at idle. Um, this is for emissions. So you can set the CO to be between 1 and 2%, which is correct for this engine. Uh, I've opened this one up a little bit just to show it inside. See if I can get the cover off. And like you can see, it's basically not very modern at all. And when you open it up, it really does smell like an old transistor radio from the 60s or 70s. But yeah, this is basically 60s technology. Here is where it connects. Giant pin up, up here. And yeah, not an integrated circuit in sight. It's just a bunch of capacitors and resistors uh, that all need to, um, to work. So basically it takes information in from the various sensors and then basically it only tells the system how long to fire the injectors. That's basically it. So the longer you fire an injector, the more fuel goes into the engine. The shorter you fire, fire injector, the less fuel goes into the engine. That's all that this thing really does. If the ECU is the brains in the system, then this is the heart. This is the MAP sensor, which stands for a Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. Basically, it senses vacuum in the system. And there's a diaphragm in here that moves back and forth when vacuum is applied here from the system. And then there are two coils which senses the movement of that diaphragm and sends a signal to the system. And this is actually what the D in Digitronic stands for. And you have to pardon me, I don't speak German at all. But D stands for Druck, which is pressure in German. Once again, sorry about that pronunciation. And that's basically how the system works. It senses a negative pressure or a vacuum, and then it adjusts the fueling depending on what that pressure is. That's why it's very, very important that these things work correctly. And I would say this is the most common item that doesn't work in this car. Because there is a, um, it's a metal, and I believe it's a brass diaphragm in here. And with time, it moves back and forth, back and forth. And finally, it cracks. And when it cracks, it lets in air. And then this reading, of course, is incorrect because it doesn't have the correct vacuum reading this actually in the engine and that will cause everything to run too rich and just not work correctly. In a modern fuel injection system these two parts are actually replaced by the basically the crank position sensor. In the Digitronic system and also uniquely in the V12 system you have these two components. This is the trigger board. It's in the distributor below the rotor, which sits up here. So when this rotates, there are two sensors here and here. On the earlier system, these are reed switches, which are closed by a magnet in here. And those systems are known for just having three wires. But this is the upgraded one, which has a Hall effect sensor, a lot more reliable, and it has four wires. So you can check on your car. If you have three wires, you have the original uh, read switches, and if you have four, uh, then it's the upgraded one. If you have three, you can buy these upgraded ones. I'll put a link down below where you can get it. Um, it's basically a lot better system. They won't stick. Uh, I have yet to put this in my car, so that will be in a future video, and I'll show you how to install this on the white V12. So then basically, this only gives you two pulses. 
but there are 12 injectors for the 12 cylinders. Those two pulses are sent to this box. This box then basically does a little bit of math and converts those into four different fuel injection groups of three cylinders each. So it takes two signals, which can basically say six cylinders and six cylinders, and puts that into three cylinders, three cylinders, three cylinders, and three cylinders. So it's not modern sequential fuel injection, but the overlap is still better than um, carburetors and it's still more efficient. But now let's head on back to the car and I will show you basically how the whole system looks together and how it works. Okay, so here we are back at the car. Now I can show you some of the parts uh, that I didn't have any spares off to show that are also important in the system. You have the two sensors I spoke of earlier. Here is the water temperature sensor. It controls basically uh, fueling, uh, knows if the engine is cold or hot, so uh, how rich or lean the fueling should be. Here is an intake air temperature sensor, so it just goes in the air filter housing here. And this one also has an effect, I believe up to 10%, it can change the richness of the fuel depending on the, uh, the temperature of the air coming into the engine. You also have the throttle pedestal here, and right below it, there is a black box here which you can hardly see. That is basically the throttle position sensor, but on the DJtronic, it only really can tell if you're at idle, so when this is all the way like so, and it can help with enrichment when you put your foot down really quickly. So it's basically like an accelerator pump uh, on a carburetor, but with the injection system. So basically it fires the uh, last group of injectors to be active really rapidly when you put your foot down quickly. I'll demonstrate that in a bit. Uh, then of course you have the fuel injectors. They're all here. 12 of them, and then you have the cold star injectors, one here, and one over here. So those are all the parts of the DJtronic system. Now I'm going to show in action how it works and how the engine runs. First I'm going to demonstrate the throttle position sensor. Basically it's at idle right now, and if let's say you're driving and you put your foot down really quickly, you don't want the engine to bog down because it's getting a lot of air before you get the extra fuel. So the way that they did it with DJtronic is very similar to how um, big carburetors work, which have a, a small little accelerator pump that just squirts an extra jet of fuel in when you put your foot down pretty quickly. The same thing is done here. So basically when it moves quickly, the last group of injectors that fired will fire an extra time and put extra fuel into the engine so it won't bog down. So we'll have the uh, ignition on right now so you can hear it if I go like this. So now this is the last bit of, or some injectors over here are the last active ones. So basically they're spraying fuel right now. So now I'm going to start it up and I'll show you how it runs. It might be a little bit flooded now since I just put a bunch of fuel into the cylinders, but let's see. So now it's at idle, and then, so you see how it basically doesn't bog down. If I were to disconnect that switch, I can do like this. It's gonna bog down. See what I mean? So that's basically what that switch does. Now it's plugged back in. And the engine accelerates normally. Overall, it's a very reliable system and a very simple one. It gets fuel to the engine and it does that just by seeing the manifold pressures and that's about it. Um, it does a better job at fueling an engine than carburetors. Uh, this engine does have more horsepower with the fuel injected system than when it was on four carbs. It also uses less fuel when it's on fuel injection than on the four carbs. It does a lot better job at warm up because the uh, carbs basically just dump extra fuel into the engine. Uh, so overall, it is a better system. 
Of course, there are a lot better systems nowadays. I mean, this system was designed in the late 60s, early 70s, and technology has come a long way. But it does a really good job at basically working after 40 years, which I think is fantastic. However, there are a few failure points that can occur. Most commonly, these fail. That will cause rich running on the European cars. Um, that is to say, on the US cars, they use a completely different one. Uh, and it, has, it doesn't use a full pressure sensor like this one, so they don't fail as often. Uh, the trigger points in the distributor can, of course, fail. All the injectors can, of course, fail. Uh, for me, the uh, Cold Star injectors were leaking when I got the engine running after it's been sitting for about 17 or 20 years. So they were just dumping extra fuel. So I had to replace those. The main injectors were fine, but of course they can stick and they open a closed position, either not giving fuel to that cylinder or flooding the engine with fuel. Uh, the contacts here can corrode and not give a good signal. So that happened to me. So I had the engine bogged down basically as soon as I gave it throttle, but I just cleaned up the contacts in there. Now that works fine. Um, these can fail, of course. The uh, temperature sensors, I've replaced this one. It wasn't failing, but it wasn't completely accurate. So put a new one in, that one can fail as well. But other than that, I would say for being a 40 to 50 year old fuel injection system, it does a really good job at making this a super smooth V12. And that was just a basic overview of the uh, Digitronic injection system used on these early injected V12 Jags. Um, if you like this video, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. Uh, also, please let me know in the comments below if you want to see a more detailed video of the system. Uh, I could show some repairs, how to basically tune the car, how to set all the pressures, um, how to set your idle, uh, basic troubleshooting, how to know which parts are working and not broken, how to test all the sensors. Uh, we can do all that. So please let me know if you want me to do a video on that and then there'll be a part two on this video. But until next time, I'm Adam and this was Luma for Classic. I'll see you soon.